Hey everyone, I'm Hannah, and today I'm going to show you just a little bit of my childhood. This video was requested by one person. Uh, Emily was watching my Instagram stories a few weeks ago, and I was cleaning out all of my uh, toy collections from the 90s and the early 2000s of you know, my childhood, and she asked if I would share it in a video. <laughs> so yes, Emily, I will share a little bit of my collection. So today I have one tub of toys that I am going to show you. Honestly, we need like a year just to go through everything. <laughs> so not only is this like a snippet of my collection, but it's also like a curated version. So let's dig in and see what Hannah Ruff was like in the 90s. It's kind of fun, there's like one of each of my collections in here. So to start, um, when I was a kid, one of my first collections was Raggedy Ann and Andy, which are dolls. So the first thing we have here is Barbie dolls. This is the Kelly and Tommy version of Raggedy Ann and Andy. It even still has the price tag, came from Walmart for $18.88. You might be wondering why the dolls are still in a box even though I was a little girl who loved dolls. I think the reason is Raggedy Ann was more collected for me. I mean, I loved it, but at the same time, it was collected for me. But I loved it. <laughs> yeah, my mom is watching. <laughs> the next thing is something that you might have seen in a video a few years back for Halloween. Raggedy Ann and Andy math. Well, it's just Raggedy Ann. <laughs> This is one of those really great 80s plastic masks and it is torn a little bit, smushed in other places, just in general poor condition. <laughs> but you still get the gist that it's a scary mask. <laughs> I think this is Raggedy Ann Andy. Now this is something that I know that I played with a lot. Because I love dolls, I love doll houses, I love playing house. I just love that whole having a family thing. Hopefully the pieces don't come out. Okay. Okay, so this is a fold-out house, and it's for like the plastic window cling things. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Somebody left some milk in the fridge. So that's what they are. Thinking back, this entire board is probably covered in my spit because how you use these pieces is you lick them and you stick them. Mmm, I just licked this entire house. <laughs> and then the thing behind it, oh, it's a second house, okay. Um, got some pieces I don't want to fall off but uh, empty on the inside oh we've got Andy sitting here looking up at the window waiting for Ann to come to the window creep I'm not sure where the actual clings are but I know I saw them when I was cleaning they're somewhere okay so next this is a small bag of toys from another one of my collections so the other collection I had I don't really remember it as well it was rabbits I would assume it's another one that somebody collected for me. So I have a handful of rabbits that are made of like that PVC plastic kind of thing. And in it, I have a few of my original Lisa Frank pieces. So I've got a plastic ring that most likely came on a cupcake at a birthday party. I have a tiny kaleidoscope. And of course, the iconic ballerina bunny. I probably took one whole ballet class because of this rabbit. Then we've got uh, Raggedy Andy holding a bouquet of flowers behind his back. Again, always looking for Anne. A few more odd things. This looks like a baby's bracelet. We've got like pastel rabbits and white beads. The elastic is pretty much shot. And then we've got an orange plastic ring with a rabbit on it, almost called it a butterfly. And then we got the goods, which are these little rabbits. So these are uh, 93. So these are just rabbits doing ordinary rabbit things, you know, like riding a gnarly wave catching some air on a skateboard, power walking around a mall. I remember having these on my shelf, but I don't think I played with them that often. But they're kind of cool now, considering my aesthetic. So I think this is the extent of my bunny collection in this tub. Warning, there are a lot of dolls, but before I get to the dolls, I kind of ease into things. So one of my collection was Mickey and Minnie Mouse. Mainly Minnie Mouse. Really loved Minnie Mouse. Wanted to be Minnie Mouse when I grew up. So the first thing we have is this little red bag. I had used it as a diaper bag for my babies. My fake babies, of course. So inside, we've got, well, this is cute. Okay, this is a heart-shaped box that has Minnie Mouse. I think I put jewelry in it when I was a kid. If you can't tell, it's plastic. That survived pretty well. Okay, I guess that was it for Minnie Mouse in this tub. Everything else in here is really random, and actually some of it is, uh, a lot more modern like we've got a piggy bank from Claire's in the year 2000 
This was gifted to me from one of my mom's friends. Okay, well I know at least one person who watches my videos is going to really appreciate this next thing. This is a tiny doll version of Jonathan Brandis when he was on the show um, Sequest. So it's Jonathan Brandis, he's on a purple stand, he has a hammerhead shark. It was very important to me that I had to know what shark this was because Jonathan Brandis was my first celebrity crush and I had to know everything about him. <laughs> it's pretty well worn and I'm sure that's because I used to take it in the bath with me a lot. He's already wearing scuba gear, it just made sense. So this is one of those things I'm just gonna keep forever and ever. Along with that shirt I have with him on it. Then there's just a few odd things like a tiny A&W root beer glass. A custom Jones Pure Cane Soda bottle in green apple from one of my friend's graduation parties. Complete with like an emo song quote on it. Good going, Brandt. <laughs> then, how have we made it this far into the video without talking about like my biggest collection? Ladybugs. There's a giant ladybug behind me. This one has just always been in my room. It's like one of the only ladybug things that I think I still keep around. But most of the little things have either gotten rid of, or they've been sold, or they're stored somewhere else, but I do have a few things in here. So again, we have another Barbie, Kelly to be exact, uh, dressed as a little ladybug. Then we have a sock monkey dressed as a ladybug. We're not a sock monkey family, so this is the only sock monkey I have ever owned. <laughs> it's because it's dressed as a ladybug. Then we've got the classic Beanie Baby. Yeah, you can't open a tub of 90s stuff without having a Beanie Baby in it. <laughs> so this is Lucky from 1995. And of course, it's an original. And now a pair of little doll shoes with play buttons on them. Well, they're not actually doll shoes, they're kid shoes, but I use them for dolls. Next, you ready for this? We're gonna look at dolls. Baby dolls. So what's left in this bag is just a few odd things. We've got shoes, more shoes, Cabbage Patch Kids shoes, an unused diaper, socks with little hot air balloons on them, a pacifier that goes to a doll that I'm pretty sure is in here, and a little rattly lamb that I'm pretty sure also belongs to a doll that's in here. We'll get to her in a second. Oh, there's also a dead mosquito in the bottom of this bag. Great. All right, so we've got a few babies in here. So the one that belongs to the rattle and the little pacifier is this girl. So my favorite kind of babies when I was a child were the ones that made sounds or that were really interactive, basically as lifelike as possible. And she actually got me in trouble with my grandma one time. So the one time in my childhood that my grandmother babysat for me, I had her who was like crying, laughing, whatever she does. And I had one of those for real kittens. So this had to have been like the early 2000s. And I know for real kitten, it was basically, it looked like a cat and it was electronic because my parents never let me have a real cat. So my grandmother was over and she heard the baby crying and she heard the cat purring and it was just way too much for her. <laughs> And she vowed to never babysit again, and she never did. All because of you! <laughs> um, when I cleaned through the basket, I actually took her batteries out, as well as any of the other ones that had batteries. So unfortunately, you can't hear her, but she's adorable. You know, come to think of it, I don't think this is your rattle. Um, this belongs to... You. Okay, the next baby. Is this your rattle? So this is, says, Hush Little Baby. Now, this baby also made sounds, would cry the whole nine yards. I don't see any of its accessories, but anyways, this baby has a hat. You are probably bald. Yeah, the one thing I never liked about this baby is that its skin was yellow. That's a condition in babies, right? Jaundice, where they have to be under a light and everything. Why would they sell a sick baby? <laughs> Why did my mom buy me a sick baby? <laughs> Like, had you asked me when I was a kid whose rattle this belonged to, I could easily tell you, but now I don't know. It really, it's just for every baby. Okay, so the last baby in here is this big tubby green guy. So he does not have any electronic mechanisms or sounds, but the thing that I always liked about him is he was very chubby. He has a lot of weight to him, so he feels like a real baby. He's just got that good soft body. And considering how pilled his jammies are, I'm gonna say that he was the one that I would take out most often. Like he was in the strollers, I would carry him to the stores. I had no shame as a kid carrying a doll to a store. It's no wonder I started babysitting when I was only 10 years old. I just love babies. Found the color forms that belong with the uh, Raggedy Ann house. I'm just going to uh, put 
put those together. I'll try to take a picture and post those on my Instagram, so definitely look out for that. So the last few things in the tub are TV shows. First we've got the ever classic Barney the Dinosaur. So this is a Barney that does have a voice box, but the batteries are taken out right now. From what I remember, I think he sings, and so sometimes I would go to sleep with him, and like if I was hugging him too tight, suddenly he would start singing in my sleep. Very scary experience, whether you're a child or an adult. That's Barney. <laughs> then I've got someone you might not recognize. This is Allegra, and she was from an early 90s Nickelodeon show called Allegra's Window. And she makes sounds. Do you still make sounds? So she called me a doodle head. I talk about it often how much I love Nickelodeon in the 90s, but I usually focus on like Clarissa Explains It All, or Doug, or Rugrats, but you might not know that it actually all started with Allegra's Window. <laughs> yeah, she was my OG Nickelodeon show. Okay, and the last TV show is The Big Comfy Couch! So these are two very tiny doll versions of the girls from the show. We've got Luna and Molly, a girl and her dolly, <laughs> on the big comfy couch. Oh my gosh, if you didn't watch this show growing up, you missed out. So the show is basically about a girl and her dolly, and there was a lot of life lessons involved. There was a giant couch. It was just one of those really good, pure, wholesome PBS kids shows. And that's it, no more stuff. That's all the 90s I have for you today. Be sure to leave me a comment down below letting me know some of your favorite 90s memories. Did you have any of these toys? I would love to reminisce about them down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me all over the internet. All of my social links are down below. Hopefully I will see you in future videos. And in the meantime, be excellent to each other.